Hello, welcome back to Turntable Guy. On the bench today, we have an Audio Technica VM540 ML cartridge. Uh, it is sitting on top of a brand new, or almost brand new, uh, Techniques uh, SL1500C. Uh, this is a gorgeous turntable. Uh, one of the uh, new turntables that Techniques has uh, started making again when they returned back to manufacturing. Uh, so, this video is all about uh, installing a cartridge, and what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be installing this uh, VM540ML, which is a very, very nice cartridge. It has a micro-linear stylus on it, and we're going to be installing it on this lovely Techniques turntable, and we're just going to go over the uh, steps on how to do that. So, nice and simple. So, if you have a, a new turntable and you want to install a cartridge, it should be very similar for any make or model okay um, the only time you're going to find a little bit of difference is if you do not have a removable head shell on your turntable now techniques do come with the removable head shells and uh, that's what we'll be uh, we'll be doing on this one and then we'll be uh, showing you how to uh, balance up your arm and uh, set your tracking force and on this table it has a vertical tracking uh, height and adjustment as well and uh, set your anti-skate all right so let us begin. Now let's uh, make sure we've got good view here because I'm going to be working right in the middle. All right, so the first thing you want to do, you're going to want to remove your head shell. Usually you just unscrew the collar like that and it will come out. And what you're presented with is your standard head shell. This is a Techniques branded head shell and there will be four wires. And those are the uh, wires for the two stereo channels on the cartridge. Red is always a right channel positive. White is left channel positive. Blue is left channel negative. And green is right channel negative. And uh, this cartridge has the markings on it as well. Okay. And there should be some corresponding markings on the cartridge as well. So, let's open up our 540 here. And then you're going to have your user's manual, and within this manual you're going to have settings for tracking force. And some basic instructions on how to mount the cartridge to the head shell. Uh, what we're interested in first is our tracking force. Which, of course, I cannot see. But uh, we'll, we'll get that soon. Well, let's, uh, let's start with the important stuff here first. All right, so this cartridge is mounted on a kind of like a fake head shell here. Nicely packaged. You just remove it like that and it is secured to this kind of fake head shell with one screw um, what i recommend the first thing you do is you always remove the stylus now on this series of audio technica it's just a matter of pulling it down and out like this just like that okay and put that stylus aside you do not want to touch it again until the cartridge is mounted on the head shell all right so we need to remove this one screw well, actually it looks like we have to remove that first this piece of plastic now we can remove our screw A little gold screw and nut. That's not the the hardware kit that comes with the cartridge. That's just purely for uh, aesthetic purposes to keep that mounted on the uh, fake head shell for packing. All right. Now my guess is there's going to be some says accessories contained within, and it says here it says to pull. Let's pull. Ah, yes. Aha, look at all this lovely stuff. 
Oh, goodness, it comes with wires. So if you didn't have wires on your head shell, you can install these Audio-Technica ones, but it looks like the ones that came with the Techniques are just fine. So we'll just set those aside. And here's your set of screws. So this is going to be a little bit more difficult of a cartridge to mount because it does not have embedded um, threads in the head shell. All right, so we're going to have to do basically all the work ourselves, so screws and nuts. So it's a little bit more work. And there you go, five uh, VM540 ML made in Japan. Nicely built, very high quality. So next thing you want to do, let's just set all that aside. We're going to have to see what length of screw we're going to need to um, use for this. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more so I can sit down just like that. So what you're going to want to do is just put everything here and we'll lay out our screws and nuts and all that kind of good stuff. It comes with some washers as well. And uh, we're just going to see what kind of length we're going to need, all right? So it looks like it comes with three different lengths. We've got uh, short, we got like medium, and long, okay? And uh, let's start with medium, okay? So we're just going to drop it in the top of the head shell like that. We're not going to worry about the washer just yet, and we're just going to get a rough idea if this is going to do it for us. And I'm going to say, yeah, that's going to do it for us because the screw is not protruding too far down, which could interfere with uh, when you're putting your stylus back on, right? So you don't want it too long. Uh, just for uh, curiosity's sake here, how's the short one? Okay, short one's definitely too short, so that's not gonna work. And the long one, obviously, is gonna be longer than the medium one. So. We now know that we're going to use our medium. So we're going to get our two mediums. Put them off the side. We'll get our two washers. Right there. And our two nuts. And we'll put away our other four screws that we're not going to need here. And uh, hang on to these. Because you may purchase other cartridges in the future. Other head shells, whatever. And it's nice to have uh, a bunch of, uh, you know, proper screws for mounting cartridges it's it's they're good to have you keep them keep them put them aside keep them for the future you never know when you're going to need them again all right so what we're going to do here this is how i like to mount because this is uh these are open-ended here what we can do is we can start our first screw let's put our washer on just like that Okay, and we're going to put our nut on too, because we can slide the cartridge in on the one here. So just thread it in just a little bit, okay, and then slide your cartridge in just like that, okay. And what you're going to want to do is just snug it up, and I mean just to the point where it's just barely catching. You just feel it tighten, and that's it, okay. Next, we're going to get our second screw. This one, we're going to actually have to put the nut on after we put the screw through, just like that. And so we'll put our nut on here. And if you look real close, the nut has some uh, has a little slot on there that you can get the screwdriver in just to... Uh, this is the fiddly part. This is why I like the new cartridges with the... Uh, With the pre-mounted uh, nuts, they're the they have the inserts, so you don't have to worry about a nut, right? Which is great. So there we go. So that's that's all we needed to do. All right. So we just want to snug that one up just a little bit as well, just like that, because now we're going to attach our wires. All right. So what do we got here? We've got color coded on the back of the cartridge. Okay, so green, red, blue, and white. All right, so it's just a matter of getting those wires matched up to the correct post. Okay, so 
I usually like to start with the top ones. So we'll start with white here and we'll just get this green and this blue one out of the way. So just grab your white, grab it by, you want to grab it, don't grab it on the wire, grab it here, right before the connection point. All right, so just right behind, grab it, get it nice and solid, get a better pair of pliers than I have because these are a piece of crap. All right, and then just slide it on and you're good. And why you want why you want to grab it here is that you'll be pushing forward, right? And you're not going to be stripping anything, and you're actually pushing against the connector here. So we'll do our red next. So grab it nice and tight there. Get in front of the red. Line it up. If you got to wiggle it a little bit, that's fine. And put it on. Okay. Real easy. And the blue, do blue next. Get the green out of the way. Grab it right there. And mount. Grab your green. And mount. And there you go. Our wiring is done so you would think oh that's it we're done right no nope, hardly um, every turntable has what's called overhang and what that means is that uh, let me zoom out here overhang is exactly what it says what it sounds like it's how much the stylus overhangs the center spindle here okay so as you bring the arm out and you put it right in front of that spindle. How many millimeters is it, is it from the tip of the stylus to the center of the center spindle? That's the overhang, okay? Now, some turntable manufacturers make it really easy for you. They give you a specification as to how far you need to mount the cartridge from the collar and the washer on the collar, all right? So, for techniques, it's really easy to remember. It's 52 millimeters, all right? So what you need to do is your head shell needs to be straight and your cartridge, or sorry, your cartridge needs to be straight in the head shell, okay, no angling, straight in the head shell and 52 millimeters. So when we put the stylus back on, okay, we need to measure from the tip to the washer on the collar for exactly 52 millimeters and we'll have perfect alignment for our techniques all right so that's in every techniques turntable manual all right i'm just going to tighten these up just a bit more okay now having said that there are what's called protractors out there now you can get a simple protractor like this one here you can put it right on your turntable like that you can bring your cartridge over mount it and what you can do is put the tip of the diamond right on that center point there and then line up the cartridge so it matches and it's straight and perpendicular with these lines, okay? And you'll have what's called kind of like a basic alignment. It's almost like a universal alignment. So um, that will work. How uh, accurate it is, is, well, that's questionable, right? So if we put it right there, that center, now what we would have to do is, as we look down on that cartridge, we would have to align it with those lines there and make sure that the, the head shell and the cartridge are, 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 perpe are not perpendicular, parallel to that, okay? So that's what we call just a simple, quick alignment protractor, okay? This one's from LP Gear, all right? Now, there are more advanced protractors. Now this one is for a dual turntable, but just to give you an idea, this is a, a, a two-step alignment, okay? So in this one, what you got to do is you have to align the cartridge here and then move it over here, and it has to be uh, square within both of these grids. And once you achieve that, you achieve the alignment 
It's a Stevenson alignment for duels. All right, there's that one. And we also have an arc protractor. So in the arc protractor, if I can find it, there it is. So this one is for Rega turntables, okay? This one's a little bit different as well. In this one, what we do is we get the cartridge good and aligned within this center grid pattern right here, okay? And then, once we do that, we move it to position C and this position C, okay? And what we're trying to do is, with the perfect alignment within this grid, does the uh, diamond touch the center of that X and the center of that X, all right? Now, just for fun here, that's pretty much centered in the grid. We move it to this one, it's now too far forward. We move it to this one, it's way back. So the alignment would be way off on a Rega turntable. This has nothing to do with techniques. It would not work with this turntable because the arm lengths are different, all right? But that's how that would work if you had a, if you had a Rega turntable. But for our purposes here, we don't have to worry about all that stuff because techniques tells us that our perfect alignment is just a simple measurement. Okay, and so what we're going to do here, we're just going to put that there. We're going to get our ruler, our tape measure, and we're going to see where we're at. So there's the diamond. I'm just putting it on the 10 mark here. So we need to go to 15.2 and you can tell I've been doing this for way too long because that's 52 millimeters right there. Okay, so I turn that, that rubber gasket is 52 millimeters right there. So what does that mean? That means the alignment is pretty much right on. So um, what I'm going to do now is I am going to eyeball this. I'm going to eyeball to see how straight it is in the head shell. Now, some cartridges are really easy to do because they're big, fat, and square. Um, this Audio Technica is a little bit more angular. It's got a, it's, it's not quite as easy. I can tell that it's off a little bit there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that this is perfectly square in the head shell. Once I have that, we'll, we'll get it back on the turntable, and I'll show you how we uh, set up our tracking for us. I'll be right back. Welcome back. So our cartridge is perfectly aligned. We've got a 52 millimeter gap from the diamond to the uh, gasket. We are perfectly straight in that head shell, 100%. And we've got our uh, stylus back on. Change my glasses here. All right, so we're ready to, uh, to mount this up on the table and we're going to get our uh, vertical tracking force adjusted. Now, for you guys who watch my channel regularly, you'll know there's a couple ways of doing this. You can use a digital tracking force adjusted, adjustment. Uh, this is really simple. We just uh, move the cartridge over, get this aligned to the tracking force on this cartridge, uh, which happens to be from 1.8 to 2.2 grams. All right, so when they give you that kind of range, best thing to do is to go right in the middle. So we're going to track this cartridge at exactly 2.0 grams, okay? So I'm going to show you the manual way of doing this first, and then we'll see how close the counterweight dial is to the actual reading, okay? Now, to do that, what we need to do first is we need to balance the arm so it is completely weightless and it uh, floats above the record or above the platter here. So what you wanna do is just bring it over, set your anti-skating to zero, and then you're gonna move the uh, counterweight back until the arm starts to float. And you can see now it's floating, but it's, uh, it's a little too much on the back end. So we're just gonna put a little weight on there until it starts coming down again. It's still a little high, so a little bit more weight. And now it's almost there. Just take your time. 
there it's coming down so I've got too much weight it's just tiny tiny increments of adjustment I think we got it now. There, perfect. So when you look at it from the side, this arm should be completely parallel to the surface here, okay? And that's what it is. So once we've got that, we put the arm back in the rest, clamp it down, hold the back end of the weight and turn the dial until zero comes around and matches that line, okay? So now you get zero. And now we can turn the entire uh, counterweight and you want to turn it uh, counterclockwise towards you until you get a reading of two grams, all right, which is right there. Okay, so now we've got it set for two grams of tracking weight according to that scale. So now what we're going to do is we're going to see how accurate that scale is. We're going to use my digital scale here and see how much weight we actually have put on this needle. And that is damn close. Okay, so that is a good quality scale and counterweight because we're at 1.96. Okay, 1.97 now. So that is basically, you know, the, the percentage of deviation is almost nil, right? So I'm just going to keep adjusting it. There's our two grams right there. So we were damn close right from the, uh, the manual setting. So there's two grams. So if you have a, a, a Techniques 1500C, you can be confident that if you're just setting the tracking weight with your uh, scale there, you're going to be right on the money. All right, second. Now, adjust your anti-skating to the exact same amount as the tracking force. So in our case here, it's going to be two. So turn this dial until it reaches number two, which is right there. Okay. Now, the other thing you can do on this turntable, which you can't do on most, is you can adjust the vertical tracking angle of the cartridge. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause. I'm going to bring you down here and I'm going to show you some tools that you can use to do that. Okay, so right now on the turntable I've got a uh, record that I don't care about, okay, because I've put this plastic uh, azimuth checker here. Um, it's not only azimuth checker, it's a VTA and azimuth checker. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to loosen our arm. Right now the scale for the Technis is set to zero millimeters, okay, so there's no no height being added to it. We're just going to move our cartridge over. We're going to line up that uh, scale there. And we're going to drop it down. And it's going to go on the record. And what we're going to want to do here is see how close we are to vertical. Okay. So if you look real close towards the back end of that head shell. So from this part here to this part here, it's pretty straight. This part angles down, so we don't want to be measuring there. What we want to be looking at is back here. So we're just going to move this back. And if you look there, you can see that we're actually angling back a little bit. All right. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to raise the back end of the cartridge up. And what do we do? Well, first of all, we unlock the wheel. And we want to do this carefully. We want to start turning this dial. Is this locked? It's not locked. Is it just tight? Let me just pull up the needle here for a minute so I don't scratch anything. Give me one sec. I just think that's a little stuck. So all the guys who own a 1500C are probably screaming at the... Uh, the computer saying, hey, you don't turn this one. You just lift it. And that is true. Um, you do not turn like on a uh, SL1200. This one you just unlock and you pull up on it like this. It's real simple. So just go on behind it there and just pull up. 
or push down. So let's look at the uh, cartridge while I'm doing that. And let's lift up and see how straight we are. And can you see that even and out there? Let me zoom out just a little bit so the focus grabs it better. That yellow label is a havoc. And I think I've got it right there. Let's just move this a little bit here. The needle is on the record right now. Okay, so there we go. I'm just going to lift up a little bit on the back. And you can see how we're getting parallel with that line. I'm going to say right there. Now, there could be some uh, optics going on with the camera. So if it looks off on the uh, on the screen here, I apologize, but to my eyeballs, it's straight, okay? So we've got perfect uh, 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 vertical tracking adjustment now. So there we go. I'm happy with that. Now the cartridge is sitting nice and straight on the record, okay? So that's our VTA. All right, so we've got a lot of adjustments done here. One final adjustment. This one, not all turntables you can do it on. Um, that's azimuth. And azimuth means how straight is the needle sitting in the groove? All right, so if we put the needle down the groove, what you want is you want that needle to be perfectly perpendicular to the surface of the record. So what you can do is you can use our plastic clear gauge here and you can drop it down in front of your record like that and then you can adjust the uh, left and right okay until you've got that nice and even that's one way of doing it now on this techniques even though the collar is screwed in all the way there's always just a little bit of play that you can just basically just turn that just a smidge left or right just to get the azimuth right and an older method which is just as tried and true is first of all get the record or the needle off the record and what you want to do is you want to put down a mirror and then you're going to drop sorry that mirror is kind of dirty you're going to drop your needle come on focus down on the mirror and you're oops you want to set your anti-skate to zero because <laughs> it's going to move there. So the anti-skate set to zero now. And what you're going to do is it's almost impossible to see it on, uh, on the camera here because it's not focusing, but you're going to look directly at that point of the needle. And it's really hard to see. You need some really high magnification glasses and you want to see if the mirror image is perfect. So if the mirror image is tilted to the left or tilted to the right, then your azimuth is off. But if it's straight up and down, the mirror image is perfect, you've got perfect azimuth. Okay, so that's how that works. And that is the final adjustment for installing a cartridge. So there's the mounting, there's the tracking force, there's the vertical tracking adjustment, and the azimuth. All right, and you've got yourself a perfectly set up cartridge as well as, of course, the alignment, which for techniques is 52 millimeters. But like I mentioned, you can use a protractor. So that takes care of mounting your cartridge on your turntable. If you have any questions or comments, by all means, leave them down in the comments section. I'll try to return your message as soon as possible. If not, give me a thumbs up. I'd appreciate that too. And we will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys. Take care.